Okay, guys, welcome to the virtual lecture for genetic drift. Um, as you may know, this is chapter 24, section 4. And uh, let's jump right into it. So, a quick review. What is a gene pool? A gene pool is all the alleles for every gene in a given population. This pretty much means that my genes, your, your genes, and the teacher genes, if we're in a classroom environment, is all encountered in a gene pool. All of those genes are in gene pool, whether they're expressed or not. Okay? Wait. But what is a population? So a population is pretty much a group of individuals of the same species that occupy the same environment and can interbreed. I'm not saying that we necessarily are the academy and uh, population necessarily interbreeds, but we are a group of individuals of the same species and occupy the same environment. In this case, the classroom environment, right? So moving right along, what is genetic drift? Genetic drift is the random change in the population's allele frequencies from one generation to the next that is attributable to change. So pretty much, the frequency is changed, as you, as you, just, as you just heard from uh, my, the definition I, I, I have up here. Um, it can either go up or down. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily um, go in the mid-range, but that's all depending on population, which we will get in to the next point. This term was coined by Mr. Seawall Wright. So moving right, around, right, yeah, right along, populations. Genetic drift plays a big role with populations, the reason being is, will be discussed after this point. Genetic drift favors either elimination or fixation of an allele. Pretty much the change. It either goes 100% or 0%. So genetic drift all depends on the size of the population. But why? Why is that? All right, let me give you a scenario, okay? Pretty much, if I were to have a coin, and the number of times I, I flip the coin is considered my population, and Say the, allele, the uh, genes expressed are heads and tails, and the allele frequency is based on how many number times I hit heads. Okay, so if I were to flip the coin a thousand times, which means that the, my population is a thousand, uh, my the chance of me getting heads is more likely because there's a fifty percent chance. The more, pretty much, the more you flip the coin, the bet, the, the more people you have, the better chance you um, have of getting that certain. Um, uh, allele expressed or the better allele frequency whereas in a small population that may vary since if you were to flip a coin 10 times you're, you're not going to get the same results because it, it's it's very it's all based on random chance right so as I said small populations have a higher random sampling error as you, if you recall from chapter 16 this is one of our vocab vocabulary words it has a higher higher random sampling error and it's compared to, compared to larger populations so chance is the key factor which determines uh, which either if the allele is ex completely expressed or if it's not expressed. So larger populations have a lower random sampling, which pretty much means that they have a higher allele frequency, and um, which is which uh, it's just good and bad. But it pretty much genetic drift favors small populations because it it wants change. As you can see in this graph, we have three populations, and we're dealing with mice here. Um, the uh, first two populations have 10 mice, and the uh, third one has 1,000 mice. Um, all of them start off with a frequency of 0.5, okay? So they're, they all have like a half, their allele frequency rate is, is 50% right now. As you can see, the smaller the population, the more likely it goes to one side of the gene. We're looking at um, ca uh, capital B and lowercase b. Capital B represents uh, black colored fur, and lowercase b re represents white colored fur. As you can see, this uh, the first population right here is increases as time passes by, as the generations pass by. This is over a 50 generation period, okay? So it increases and it moves on to being all black, all BB, capital BB. And as for the um, the other population that has, has 10 mice in it, it goes the other way. It, go, it favors the uh, small bees. So it ends up being, has a genotype of BB. Which re a small lowercase bb, which results in uh, white colored fur. As you can see, there it seems to be constant in um, for the population that has a thousand mice, which pretty much means that like there is a lot of genetic variation and there's a, 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 a like an equal amount of both populations. Okay, get it? All right. So I'm going to skip this because this is a poll question and I will be asking this in class. But just for you to get an idea. Genetic drift occurs only in, in small populations. True, cierto, or false, false, okay? I'm going to leave that to you guys during class, so I'm going to move right along. 
So genetic drift has the ability to rapidly alter allele frequencies when population decreases. Haha, <laughs> like the arrow. So let's talk about one phenomenon that this ex uh, that um, gene dr genetic drift um, uh, occurs. Well, yeah, it shows the bottleneck effect. What exactly is the bottleneck effect? The bottleneck effect is a situation in which a population size is dramatically reduced and then rebounds. What do I mean by rebound? Pretty much the population rises to its normal level. Okay, while the population is small, the genetic drift rapidly reduces the gen genetic diversity, hence reduces genetic variation of the population. Okay, and these are three points I want you to keep in mind. Okay, members may have different allele frequencies than, that differ from those of the original population. Pretty much it could have a higher allele frequency for the dominant gene or the recessive gene. It acts quicker to reduce genetic variation when the population size is smaller. Oh, what a typo. I'll fix that up though for tomorrow, okay? So alleles may be eliminated. So pretty much, as I said before, it can either go from 0% to 100% uh, depending on um, which, which gene we're looking at, okay? And how, obviously how um, the size of the population. Eventually, the size of the population does grow back, uh, but variation does not gr grow along with it. Okay, which we will see an example of this later on in the presentation. Now, this is a picture that I got from the book. Very well ex explains it very well. Uh, we have three types of frogs in this pond: a yellow, green, and a brown frog. Okay, as you can see, the the lake, sorry, the pond initially is filled with water, but as a drought occurs, there is a decrease in population because the, obviously the frogs can't survive. And you can see that the green frogs are dis disappear. So pretty much this is, an exact, this is exactly what happens in a bottle, uh, bottleneck effect. Okay. So and then when the pond regains its size, the frogs are re able to reproduce, but there are no more green colored frogs. Hence the loss of genetic, hence the loss of this allele and decrease in genetic variations. We started with yellow, green, and brown. Now we're left with yellow and brown frogs. The next effect that I would like to talk to you about is the founder effect. What is the founder effect? Um, it is genetic drift that occurs within when a small population of individuals separates from a larger population and establishes a colony in a new location. One Example I would like to point out are the Amish people. Yes, the Amish people. Okay, actually, um, there are a group of Amish people, uh, sorry, Amish descent in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, initially, three people uh, s um, immigrated to this area in the 1770s, around that time, and now the population is 8,000. Okay, and um, there. Surprisingly, there's, there's been found that there's a 7% allele frequency within the population, within this population for a certain disease. This disease is known as Ellis Van uh, Creveld syndrome, which is pretty much a recessive form of dwarfism. Okay, now what's what's what like makes scientists think is that this disease is very very rare amongst any populations, and it was especially rare amongst the original populations where the um, the three people of Amish descent immigrated from. So this shows like a perfect example of how um, the founder effect uh, um, plays a role because, because it takes a random allele frequency, okay, brings it over, and that allele is expressed as the population grows, okay? Fun fact, this vein, okay, so yeah, this, this is probably known, this may be known to some of my uh, Spanish native classmates. We recently had a chapter on it about endangered species, species and like uh, helping the environment. Um, I would like to point out that cheetahs play a big role, well, as, as a huge example of like what occurs when population decreases and genetic variation decreases and then increase, yeah, so pretty much. The cheetah has is considered an endangered species because it's lost pretty much all of its genetic uh, variation. This is scientists pretty think that it's most likely due to the bottleneck effect. They're not sure, but they think that it this effect the bottleneck effect occurred about ten thousand to twelve thousand years ago. Um, it reduced the population to the point of all like uh, the cheetah almost being extinct, but it did rebound, meaning it, the population did grow back. So how, so what we know what do we know from the uh, bottleneck effect? We know that. Once it decreases and it, the the environment uh, stabilizes, the population does grow, but there's genetic variation lost. This pretty much means that the the cheetahs became monomorphic. What is what is monomorphic again? Uh, monomorphic means that the genes 
that exists predominantly in an organism. There's no two or more like variations of the gene. It's the, as I said, the genetic variation has decreased. Okay. So my brother from another mother, Mr. Motu Kimura. Okay, this guy was a Japanese evolutionary biologist, and he pretty much disagreed with Darwin's ideas about natural selection. He had something else in mind in which he, which he thought like actually drove genetic variation. Mr. Kimura proposed that the change in genetic variation is caused by genetic drift, not natural selection. Let's see why. Whoops. Let's go back one side. Yep. So Kimura created the, uh, the, 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 the neutral theory of evolution, pretty much states that most genetic vari variation is due to the accumulation of neutral mutations that obtain high, high frequencies in a population via, via, sorry, via genetic drift. Now, all, I'm sure all of you know what neutral mu mutations are. I have a poll question on it. It's really, really easy, and if anybody gets, gets this wrong, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. But... Neutral mutations are pretty much mutations that don't have any effect on the gene sequence that it targets, okay? So pretty much, Mr. Kimura believed in neutral variation, which is genetic variation in which neutral selection does not favor any particular genotype. This does not affect reproductive success, okay? So this is an example of neutral mutations, all right? So as you can see, in the beginning, all these GGG um, codons are normal, and then a mutation occurs where the last G nucleotide turns into a C. As you learned from last semester, remember that the last nucleotide does not make a difference in the resulting protein that's later transcribed, okay? So genetic drift occurs, and over time, all these generations accumulate this codon in their, ge in their genome. It doesn't have any effect on them, but there is, there is seen, it's, it's shown that the, instead of having GGG as a codon, it's G, GGC for this specific um, nucleotide sequence. So he proposed another theory, the non-Darwinian theory, which is the idea that much of modern variation in gene sequences is explained by neutral variation rather than adaptive variation. Remember what adaptive variation is, like how we how the genes pretty much change to, uh, in order to adapt for the environment due to like environmental changes. Uh, Gary explained that in a previous in, 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 in her lecture. Um, so, um, Mr. Kimura did agree that Darwin, um, that, na that did agree with Darwin's idea of natural selection in the, f in the sense that adaptive change uh, did, um, n natural selection is responsible for like adaptive changes such as the giraffe, like the long neck. Over time, um, it did like grow long neck due to like its ability to, ab ability to um, adapt to the environment and its ne necessity for like uh, um, tree leaves and whatnot. So, but he wanted to get the idea across that variation in DNA sequences was explained by neutral variation. Okay? Thank you very, very much. And I hope you learned something from... Yep, that's me. All right, guys. Talk to you later.